Okay guys, welcome back to fifth grade today. So today we're gonna to be talking about different types of organisms and their cells. Um, so first, I just want to show you guys this video. So today we're gonna to be talking about different types of cells, particularly unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms. And so first we're gonna talk about, well, what is a cell? Um, cells are basic building blocks for all living things. Um, cells are the smallest living thing that come together and um, make bigger living things and perform all the life functions. So, what are unicellular organisms? So we know that the word uni means one. So you can also call this a single celled organism. Um, and so this type of cell is responsible for all life functions. So this one cell in this organism does all life functions for this organism, such as feeding and reproduction, movement, everything. Um, and sometimes these are too small to even see without like a microscope or like a, um, something that you can really zoom in and see it. Um, they're really, really small. And so what are multicellular organisms? So we know multi means many. So a multicellular organism is an organism that um, requires and relies on many types of cells um, to perform life functions. Um, so we as humans are multicellular organisms. Animals, plants, and fungi are multicellular organisms. And um, so multicellular organisms um, depend on the specialization of different cells for various functions. So we know that we have muscles. So we have um, smooth muscle cells that help us move our body. And then we have skin cells on the top that protect our insides from everything on the outside. We have so many different types of cells. We have nerve cells, and these cells um, send signals to the rest of our body when we need to know something. Hey students, um, so you may be wondering, where do we see all these different types of cells? Um, well, we, we have um, unicellular organisms in everyday life. Um, we see these everywhere. And an example of this is bacteria. And bacteria is on everything, even our hands. So this is why it's so important to wash our hands, um, especially after using the bathroom and before we eat. So we don't, we're not eating all this bacteria. Um, we also see mold. Mold is an example of a unicellular organism because it relies on one type of cell to live. Um, have you ever seen, um, uh, have you ever looked at your bread at home and seen some blue, green, or black fuzzy stuff on it? This is mold. Um, mold feeds off the moisture in the bread um, inside of the bread bag. Um, multicellular organisms. A good example of this is us humans. Um, our bodies rely on many different systems and cells to stay alive. Um, we rely on nerve cells to tell us, whoa, don't touch the stove, it's too hot. Um, and then if we do touch something hot, our nerve cells send signals to our brain that says, take your hand off that, don't touch it. Um, we also rely on cardiac cells, or cardiac cells are the cells that make up our heart. Um, and we rely on these to keep our blood pumping throughout our bodies. Okay, so you guys can see that there are a lot of different cells that make up a human, and we rely on all of those to keep us alive. So, we're kind of going to go back over um, some things from the... the basic building blocks for all living things. Cells are also the smallest part, um, 
the smallest unit of life, that they all come together um, and make living things and perform life functions. So as you can see right here, a um, muscle cell builds muscle tissue, um, and then that builds an organ like our heart. And so, um, and then the organs build systems which build us as organisms, a multicellular organism. So here you can see that um, there's many different steps that make up a human. And here um, is a unicellular organism. So as you can see, like this is the entire organism right here. Um, so you can see right here, it's, it's not very complex, it's very simple. Um, and that one cell um, does all the functions to keep it alive. So, unicellular organisms. Here's a couple pictures of unicellular organisms. Um, these are also called single-celled organisms. Um, this one type of cell is responsible for all living functions, such as feeding and reproduction, um, and these are usually too small to see. So all of these pictures are from under a microscope. And so if we would look at it, um, like on the table here, there are probably a lot of germs and bacteria on this table, but can you see them? Can you see the bacteria on your hands? No. Um, so you would have to um, get a microscope and look really closely. And here are a few more examples of multicellular organisms. So here, what do we have here? A rabbit. A rabbit. And we can see that all these different organs have all sorts of different cells that make them up. So the heart cell um, makes up, or the heart has, is made up of cardiac cells and like the intestines here, they're made up of different cells because the heart is made for pumping and then the intestines are made for absorbing nutrients. And then here, plants are a multicellular organism. And you can see here that um, like the flower is made up of different cells um, as like the roots because they have different functions. And then here is another example of a human. So you have the reproductive system, blood cells, nerve cells, bone tissue, um, muscle cells, intestinal cells, fat cells, all sorts of different cells that make us up. We are, as humans, are very, very complex. Okay, so now let's get out our journals. Let me just get some paper. Um, and let's make some observations. So what do you, what kind of observations do you see from this human muscle cell? Just write down kind of what you see. Um, same thing for the human kidney cells. Do you see a pattern? Um, do you see different colors? What shape are they? Can someone tell me as they're writing what they're seeing? Um, I said lots of different layers because in the human muscle cell it kind of looks like layers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hayden, what are you thinking? I said it's very pink and it's very flat looking. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the kidney cell? I said it has a bunch of circles and yeah. it's more mm -hmm. purple. Yep. And what, what do you notice? Um, about the, like, there's these little dots, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so these are like the center of the brain of each cell. So each one of these is like a different um, cell. So you can kind of separate the cells by the nucleus of the cell. And so here, like, all oh, these represent, like, represent how many cells are kind of in the, in the picture. So great job. Okay, now. Let's look at these cells. And mm -hmm. so the last one was multicellular. This one is unicellular. So write down some observations in your journal about what you notice about a unicellular organism. What's your observation? 
observations. Can someone tell me what an observation means? It's like what you see. Right. What you see, what you hear, it's all about your senses. So what you observe with your senses. Perfect. So do, you, do one of you guys want to tell me um, some of your observations about these pictures? Um, I think that they were a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. They're a lot smaller. And as you can see, so this is one organism. So in the last one, that that was many that was different parts of the same organism. But this right here, it's not just a cell, it's an organism, right? Mm. So these organisms are very, very small, and this is even under a microscope, guys. Wow. Um, so this is one organism, and it's made up of one type of cell that has all of its life functions. And you can kind of see, like these are shaped long and kind of skinny, right? And then like we're shaped very uniquely. We, us as an organism, as humans, we're not, we don't look like this, right? Yeah, I also said that it was oval shaped. Yes, good observation. And I have yes. one more observation. Okay. So this one kind of has a lot of dimension. Like if you look at the green, whereas like the um, other cell, was very like Caden said flat, but this one looks kind of like, especially in that one, like little little mountains. Almost. Bumpy. Yeah, yeah bumpy. this is a very 3D. Um, yeah. So this is like from literally under a microscope. Um, so it's so, isn't it weird how it's so small, but still it's got some depth to it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the class into table groups. So you guys will be a table group. Um, and you are going to be assigned either multicellular organisms or unicellular organisms. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make an infographic or a poster. So I gave you guys two sheets of paper. So one of them is for your notes, like your notebook, and one of them is for your poster. And um, you can use your computer, your phone, you can do, do an iPad or whatever you need to um, get. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of make an infographic about your assigned cell. And you can use what we've learned so far. You can draw pictures. It doesn't even have to have a lot of words on it, just as many pictures, anything you can think of. And um, you can use any of these to help get your information um, for your infographic. And so I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes to do that. Um, so if you want to use your phone, your computer, or anything like that, um, mm -hmm. you can find your own sources, or these are a few sources that I've found mm -hmm. um, for you guys to use. Mm -hmm. And um, so since there's only one table group here, I'm gonna let you guys pick which you guys wanna do, unicellular or multicellular. What do you wanna do, Zoe? I, you pick, Hayden. Um, I think unicellular would okay. be really cool to investigate. Anything you can find out about it, you can put on your infographic. Anything you think your classmates need to know. And I mean, like here's examples. So like, um, what are they? What are pros and cons? Or like descriptions of them? Um, and any kind of pictures or anything like that. And I'm just gonna kind of Okay, so I think we need to talk about how unicellulars only have one cell, which makes them so different. And I also put some examples on there. Like what? Like bacteria. Oh. And protists. And yeast. Interesting. Very interesting. Good job. Y'all doing great. So what are some things that we've learned so far in this lesson that you also see online? Um, well, like you said, that they were very small. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to... Because you can't really see bacteria and stuff.
And I've learned there's uh, two different types of cells. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, maybe I looked at this wrong. No, okay. So there's prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Mm -hmm. And then prokaryotes are plant cells and eukaryotes are animal and human cells. Good job. Very different, very different functions, right? Mm-hmm. And you can only see them under a microscope. draw a microscope. I'm too. Just thinking, guys. And so you guys can, like, combine your infographic, um, so you don't write, like, um, the same two of the same things, you know, because, um, you're working in a group, and uh -oh. so you, you don't have to write the same exact things or okay. that sort of thing, so kind of work together, talk about it, um, mine says that unicellular organisms can be found everywhere. Whoa. Mm -hmm. they, they're bacteria is on everything. Your hands, your phone, everything you touch, even food. That's scary. Yeah. Wow. Guess what I've learned, Zoe? What? I learned that colonies of multicellular organisms can double their size in between 30 minutes. <gasps> Whoa. That's crazy. I know. Mine says the oldest forms of, oh, never mind. Don't listen to that one. I don't even know what that means. It says unicellular organisms measure only a third of a micron. That seems really small. I wonder if you can even see a micron under a microscope. I don't know. Sounds like you guys are thinking good over here. So let's try to finish up in the next couple minutes. Okay. Okay. I think I'm good. Okay. So now what we're going to do as a class. So you guys did unicellular organisms. But some of these other tables, they did multicellular. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach our other classmates um, all about this topic that you are now an expert on, right? Mm, yeah. Okay, so what I've done is I've started a bubble chart um, on the board. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take turns putting information on this bubble chart. So who wants to be the first one to add a bubble chart on the chart about unicellular organisms? Zoe, do you want to sure. add a bubble? You can do pictures, facts, oh, just a word. Anything okay. You want. And I put different colors up here, so we'll make each one a different color if you want. One cell. Perfect. Can you draw a bubble around that? Oh, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Perfect. Hayden? Yeah. What do you mean by one cell, Zoe? Uh, they are organisms that only have one cell. They're made up of just of, one type yeah. of cell, right? Very small. You have to use a microscope to see these, right? 
It doesn't matter. Why I'll add some examples. Okay. Let's, that'd be a good job. Let's add some examples. And remember, you can draw pictures or whatever you want. Yeah. So, so explain what you're writing. I'm writing examples, examples. of unicellular organisms. Like you need it. Yes, you depend on it. You have to have that. Perfect. Um, and another part of multicellular um, organisms is each cell is a specialized cell. So this means that each type of cell that we have, such as our cardiac cells, this, these cells are specialized to make up our heart and their job is to pump the blood. But going back to reproductive cells, um, female eggs are, um, their specialized um, function is to form a child when a male reproductive cell is combined with that. Um, so, do you think we could do that with a unicellular organism? Do you think we can have different specialized cells in there? No. 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 The unicellular organisms have one type of cell that, that does everything for them, that keeps them fed, that keeps them um, moving and alive. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Very crazy. Okay, so um, I'm also gonna put some examples. Um, in my chart of multicellular organisms. So can somebody give me an example? We, we know that humans. Plants. Perfect, so plants. Animals. All right. And there was one more, I think. We didn't talk about it. We talked about it outside though. Um, fungus. All right, so these are examples of multicellular organisms. Great job with your maps, guys. And so if you will, in your journal, you guys are gonna copy down these um, maps that we made as a class. Mm. I'm just gonna give you guys a couple minutes to copy that down, okay? Now that you guys have copied that down in your journal, um, is there any questions that you guys have? Are y'all confused about anything? Um, vocabulary? 
are words that you may have found that um, you don't know that we have up here. Well, We've we, already went over rely and specialized, right? Are we going to be able to use a microscope one day? Yes. So maybe one day we can, uh, I know a fun activity that a lot of people do when COVID is not around is um, like rub your hand on a dish, on a Petri dish, and you, all, you have bacteria on your hands. Even if you scrub, scrub some, sometimes bacteria just sticks to us. And so when you rub your hand on a Petri dish and put it under a microscope, you can see those germs because they rub off of your hand and then you can actually see the bacteria. Isn't that crazy? That would be cool. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Okay, so now we're kind of going to go over some of the vocabulary that we learned. Okay, so can somebody tell me um, what a cell is? Hayden. A cell is a building block that builds life. Perfect. And it's the smallest unit of life that we have, right? Perfect. Can somebody tell me what multi means? Just that suffix multi. Would, I lot, mean prefix. Like more than one. More than one. Perfect. So multi, the prefix multi means many, right? More than one. Can somebody tell me what the prefix uni means? One. One. Perfect. Unite means one. So we know multicellular means many different types of cells which make up the, um, an organism. Unicellular is one type of cell that makes up an organism. Perfect. And can somebody tell me what specialized means? So specialized means that they have a specific duty, a specific function. They are made in a special way, um, such as heart cells. They are specialized to pump the blood. Mm -hmm. um, and then function. So function means what they do. Um, so like the intestines, our small intestines in our belly, um, the function of that is to absorb our nutrients that we mm. eat. Mm. And so here are those definitions. If you guys want to um, put those in your journal. So let's see. Yep, we went over those. Didn't miss anything. All right, so now we're going to do an exit ticket. So um, with a sheet of your paper, um, you should write these in your journal. So, um, you can show me these while you're, when you're leaving class. So we're going to do a 24 seven activity. So get out your journal and write what you have learned today in 24 words. Try to get as close to 24 words as you can without going, well, you can go over, but like, so the closest you can get to 24 words is 24. So if you have like five words, we need to add more, right? And, but don't write a whole paragraph. So if you will in your journals, go ahead and write what you've learned in 24 words. Okay, Zoe, you look finished. Can you tell me what you um, wrote and how many words that you got? Um, I got, okay, I wrote, there are multicellular and unicellular organisms. Cells are the building block for life. 
Unicellular organisms are small and multicellular organisms are bigger. Perfect. And I think that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 20. Awesome. You got really close. What about you, Hayden? I had 25 words. Wow. You got really close. Can you read me your answer? Yes. I said cells are made into two types, multicellular and unicellular. Cells are the building blocks or foundation of life. Cells are very important and are very small. Awesome. Great. So now what you're going to do, and this is going to be really hard, guys. So think of the main ideas that you learned and try to write in seven words. Zoe, can you tell me what you got? Um, I said they are both multicellular and unicellular organisms. Perfect. I actually have seven words. Awesome. I said cells are the building blocks of life. Perfect. Thank you guys so much.